How many of you know somebody who has one or more chronic medical problems? Either it's diabetes, high blood pressure, hypothyroid, dementia, Parkinson's disease, some kind of cancer, insomnia, anxiety, depression, what have you. We all know somebody, right, who has one or more of these chronic medical problems. We also know someone who takes more than three to five pills a day. Now, I want to ask, why do we maintain and manage chronic medical problems as opposed to reversing them? Why do we want to keep them to the heart? Why can't we say, let's sit as a physician, you come to me, you sit with me, and I say, you did not have this problem before. No, you do. Let's work to see if we can reverse this. We may not be perfect at it, but at least we may make some progress, get you from, let's say, five pills to one pill a day. Wouldn't be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? So let's find out in less than 10 minutes. Why can't we reverse our chronic medical problems, right? Are you, are you guys ready? Good. All right. I want you to quickly visualize something with me, okay? You're walking into your doctor's office. Are you there yet? Your doctor's office? No, nobody wants to go there, but just for the sake of thought experiment. You are walking into your doctor's office. The doctor's staff situates you in, their, in, your, in, your, uh, in the exam room, and then she does what? She starts taking a series of measurements from you. Your blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, temperature. And if you're in pain, she's going to ask you a number. Give me a number to your pain, 0 to 10. Give me a number. Right? But prior to that, she already took your height and weight. So she took all these numbers, these metrics, and documented nicely in your chart. The doctor walks in. She talks to you for a moment, for a few moments, does a series of acts called physical exam. She registers all these numbers, these metrics that the, uh, her assistant, medical assistant had documented. And she reviews your lab test that she ordered the, your, the prior visit. Pause for a moment. What is she doing? What is she thinking when she's going through all this? She's trying to hack into your biological operating system. She wants to know the inside of you. What's going on? What's the status of your health? What's the status of your illness if you have something? Now, if you examine, she is using metrics, some measurements from you to understand, to hack into your, into your system. Did any of you had an acupuncture treatment before? Did any of you? Yes. Uh, how about Indian Ayurvedic herbal treatment? Any of you heard about it? Yeah, some of you maybe. Yeah. You would observe that they're not actually collecting any metrics from you. When you go to them, they're not measuring anything. When they're checking your pulse, they're actually checking the quality of your pulse, not the number of that heartbeat per minute. Okay. So now, what has this to do with our question, how can we reverse chronic medical problems? This has everything to do with it. We'll get to that in a moment. This quantification of human biology, measuring things in our bodies, is a relatively new discovery or a new practice in the field of medicine. 300 years ago, that's, that's all it is. It's only a 300-year-old practice, roughly. Considering thousands of years of human civilization, this is just a blip in the timeline of um, the practice of healing tradition. Now, why do we need measurements? For many, many, many years, we did not have a method to test our hypotheses, to test our theories. If I were to say, brushing teeth twice a day is going to prevent gum infection. Right? It's an intelligent statement. I just, that's a hypothesis. Now we need to test it. We need metrics to test it. Okay? So that is how medicine, the science of medicine developed. Now the problem, there are many advantages to it because we have evidence to prove or disprove our hypothesis, our intelligent guess, but then there is a problem with it. Now I measure the blood pressure. The blood pressure is elevated because something else is going on within the cells, right? 
the blood sugar is elevated, something bad is going on within our biology, which is why these numbers are elevated. Now, what happens if I give a name and give a status of a diagnosis to these numbers? These are what we call telltale signs. They're not the problem in themselves. The high sugar is a consequence of something else going on. But if I elevate that to the status of a diagnosis, then what happens? The drug company comes with a molecule and says, now, I have a pill or an injection, I can bring the blood sugar down. I can bring the blood pressure down. I can bring your thyroid numbers down. I can bring your inflammatory markers down. I can bring your cholesterol down. Then what happens if we suck them, if we subject to that uh, drug? We become lifelong repeat customers to the drug company, don't we? Now, what happens if we become lifelong repeat customers to a drug company? We need money to pay for that. We become lifelong repeat customers to an insurance company. Now, when I say it's a sign of something more sinister happening within the body, let me give you an example. We all know, or most of us know, that consuming sugars, consuming calories in the form of sugars, part of it gets used up for immediate energy needs, right? And part of it gets used, part of it gets stored in fat cells, adipose tissue, as fat. The sugar that we consume gets converted into fat and gets stored. Now what happens if we consume um, either excess calories or the not, not the right type of calories? The quality of calories is not right. The body can't process it right. So you consume that, part of it gets used up, part of it gets stored, and excess of that fatty acids keeps circulating in the blood. Now see, this is only one mechanism, but see how it starts manifesting as so many signs or symptoms, as so many diseases. One process, many diseases, okay? So these fatty acids, let us say they start depositing into your muscle cells, okay? They don't really belong there, maybe a little amount, but in excess, this is what happens. They go and deposit these little fat globules in the muscle cells, they get a new name. They're called intramyocellular, triacylglycerols. It's just a fancy name for little fat globules that are deposited and disrupting the mechanism, the homeostasis, the equilibrium of this muscle cell. This results in what's called insulin resistance and the blood sugar starts going up. And when we check your finger sticks, that's what we pick up, the high blood sugar. The high blood sugar is not the problem. What's going on within the cell? The disequilibrium, the dysbiosis, the homeostasis that is disturbed is the problem. Now, it doesn't stop there. So these fatty acids goes up, goes everywhere into every organ, gets deposited, let us say, disrupts the liver. It ends up with a condition called fatty liver. Fatty liver is becoming the number one cause of cirrhosis of the liver. We used to think alcohol is the cause of cirrhosis, right? In the industrial age, fatty liver is the number or is becoming the number one cause of cirrhosis of the liver. But there is no treatment for fatty liver. There is no drug for fatty liver. And then these fatty acids continue. Let us say they get deposited in the pancreas. It develops into a condition called fatty pancreas. See, I'm talking about one process resulting in multiple diseases, right? And if this continues to happen, the body ends up with a stage called, state called chronic inflammatory state. This chronic inflammatory state then results in other diseases such as dementia, autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid, insomnia, obesity. You see so many diseases, but one pathway, right? So what if we start giving pills to all these diseases, right? Five diseases, 15 pills. And you are already a repeat customer to the drug company. The drug companies are excited. You see, you have 100 million people, 100 million patients with one or more medical problems, repeat customers. They don't need to work a single day because you're already paying through insurance every single month, right? As doctors, sometimes we feel like we're agents for these drug companies. How pathetic is that? Now, 
what really causes this disequilibrium that I just uh, spoke about. I said consuming calories, the wrong type of calories. Let me explain a little bit more. There's so many reasons why this happens. I'm just going to give you one common, very pervasive problem that we see. You take a sweet potato that's brimming with fiber, healthy starch, antioxidants, minerals, vitamins, phytochemicals, and then you take everything out, you bleach all of that out, and you so very meticulously add salt, sugar, and oil, and preservatives, and fry it. <laughs> you see, you took all the goodness out of it and put junk into it and put it in a nice, attractive package and give 30% discount and put it right in the center of that grocery store. And you go in, you think you have free will? No, you don't. <laughs> you go in, your eyes go straight to that package because it's 30% off and it's Thanksgiving. Right? So you take that, and when the scientists, the scientists working for these drug companies, they do an excellent job of adding the exact right amount of salt so that you keep coming back to that product over and over and over again. So what did, what happened? You just became a repeat customer to the drug industry, uh, to the food industry, right? To the food product. So you're already a repeat customer to drug industry insurance industry, and the food industry. We are thoroughly hacked with, by these, the ecosystem that we have created. And now I'm asking, how can we reverse this problem? Right? You see the problem? Now, in medicine, knowledge is built from bottom up. You start with lab research, clinical research. It becomes part of medical school textbooks. It becomes part of the medical practice and becomes part of the collective consciousness of the medical professionals. Now, for our problem, because we're already so deep in the problem, we start with the problem itself and work our way backwards. So remember, we started off our discussion with you walking into your physician's office. The next time you walk in, just don't take the prescription and go, because you have an insurance, you have a health savings account, just don't use it. You pause, you ask your doctor, you challenge yourself, you challenge your physician. How can we reverse my chronic medical problem? There are techniques to do it. And your doctor would know it if they start thinking this way. Our, we have to make a switch in how we approach chronic medical problems. So if you, when you're asking, how can I reverse my chronic medical problem, my, for example, my diabetes, you are implicitly asking, how can I repair and regenerate what's going on within me? How can I repair and regenerate the dysbiosis, the disturbed homeostasis that's going on within me? See, within the question lies the seed to the answer. So would you remember the next time you go to the doctor's office? Don't just, just be happy that you know, be satisfied with the prescription. Just pause for a moment. Because when you develop that questioning attitude, even if your physician doesn't know or doesn't tell you, you will start looking up. There are people, there are centers who are doing it, who are reversing chronic medical problems. We just need to scale it up, right? We have to make it a common practice across the nation how to reverse chronic medical problems. Thank you.